New Caledonia is a Pacific archipelago located 1,000 for 1,000 kilometers from the northeast coast of Australia. It is a fringe of a sea's territory and compresses Grand Terre Island, Isle of Pines and the Loyalty Islands. They were discovered by Cook in 1744 and named by him from 1793 Onwards, they were settled by some French missionaries, but it was in 1860 that they gained independence. New Caledonia, or Kanaki as it's known by the Melanesian inhabitants, is one of the world's most interesting territories in terms of biodiversity. In contrast to the islands of the South Pacific, most of which are of volcanic origin, it is made up of a continental fragment that was separated from the mainland 250 million years ago. Being isolated, its fauna and flora evolved to become a unique heritage. It has 3,500 species, of which three quarters are endemic. New Caledonia offers an outstanding variety of atmospheres and landscapes. Its white sand beaches, fringed with cocoa palms, are rate amongst the most beautiful in the Pacific. Their archipelago also invites adventure and escapism. There are 200,000 inhabitants, of whom more than 40% are French and the rest are a mixture of Melanesian and Asian descent. The Asian community live of growing corn, cassava, fishing and livestock, whereas the French earn their living from tourism, coffee plantations and mining. Even though the cost of living is very high, the quality of life there is very much so too. The capital Noumea, a French protectorate, is the Paris of the Pacific, with its restaurants, designer boutiques and Peugeot cars. It has an air of a tropical Riviera. Well organized and modern, the Palm Line Square is at the center, where business is concentrated, along with a port full of cruisers and luxury yachts. On the outer skirts of the town, there are the attractive beaches in Citrons and Ansebata Bays, which now accommodated hotels of all categories. Noteworthy is the Quendo Beach Resort, on the beach of the same name, which offers bungalows of unmatched comfort and exotism. And then there is the Meridian, which is the best and most luxurious on the island. Its 240 rooms are very spacious and comfortable, and each one has a private balcony facing the pool and the sea. There are two hills that are worth going up to enjoy the views they offer and to get a good idea of the shape of Grand Terre, the main island. These hills are Fort Tereka and Owen Toro. Grand Terre Island is narrow, just 50 kilometers across and 500 kilometers long, and is also known as the pencil due to its elongated shape. It contains 30% of the world's nickel reserves, as well as iron, cobalt, chrome, gold and silver. I traveled with Simon, a New Zealand doctor who I had made at the hostel in Noumea. 
we rented a car, a Twingo, which we call Josie by joining the initials of Jordi and Simon. We did the whole trip together. At the southern end of the island is the 9,000 hectare Blue Riviera Park. It is full of paths, streams and lakes. You feel surrounded by an impressive landscape where you can discover extraordinary fauna and flora. Lakes like Yet, thousand year old trees like the Great Kaori, the dry tree forest creates a ghostly impression of this place. The earth is red as a result of the minerals that it contains. A red track leads to the Madeline waterfalls set in unspoiled natural surroundings. What surprised us was the contrast between the red earth and the green vegetation. To put the finishing touch, a black and grey dusk over the plain of the lakes, it's a grotesque view of this spot. One hundred sixty-two kilometers from Noumea, you come across Burrail, a regional agriculture and business center. It consists entirely of one main street with the church and the town hall. The attraction that draws you all the way here is seeing the Bone Home Rock formations on the coast, a natural tunnel cut into the rock. A path takes you to the Belvedere viewpoint, which overlooks the whole rocky coastline with the Turtle Bay and the Monkey Puzzle trees. We stay at the Pooh Beach campsite, which is the biggest one on the island. Every sunset became a, a, a spectacle of fire and flaming shades of red, a storm that seemed to be about to explode from one moment to the next, an Eden that we anxiously await every day. The Isle of Pines is 70 kilometers south of Grand Terre and is reached by Catamaran. It is so beautiful that it's like being in a five stars hotel created by nature, above a turquoise lagoon. This island is considered one of the most beautiful in the Pacific. The island is 14 kilometers wide and 18 long and is known for the prolific pine that grows in the middle of the white sand beaches and lagoons and is extraordinarily beautiful in its surroundings. Climbing the Nega Peak allows us to get an idea of the shape of the island. Kuto and Kanumira Bays are separated only by a narrow strip of white sand and transparent water. No two bays look the same, since they boast boundless natural variety. We 
camped at the Our Gate, right in front of Canomero Beach, which is one of the prettiest due to its turquoise water. Pau is the largest settlement on the island, with the Church of Our Lady of Ascension, which was built in 1860. From 1872 until 1912, it was a penal colony and you can still see the remains of the cells, a beautiful spot. A trip around the island by four-wheel drive, down to the end of the island, Gaji Bay, took us through a forest of Mediterranean pines, most of which had been cut down to provide wood for Numea. It also took us to other beaches and bays, like Rollo Bay, famous for the breakers that leave white foam. The beach is wonderful, the blue-green color of the water and the brilliant white sand are almost painful to look at. and St. Maurice Bay, a truly peaceful retreat amongst the Totems. And I couldn't miss the opportunity to experience the kindness of the native inhabitants, the Kunis, and see how they still live in traditional houses. But the island's real star attraction is reaching Upi Bay, full of big coralline rocks that look like mushrooms. We took a trip in a dugout, the traditional Melanesian canoe, to reach one side of the bay. From there we walk about 40 minutes through dense vegetation to get to Oro Bay. There, we cross a stream with very clear water and make our way to the huge natural pool that makes this one of the most impressive places in the Pacific. The purity of the water and the presence of unusual fish make it seem like a natural aquarium. To find yourself all of a sudden in the midst of this crystal water that seem unreal makes you feel like you are in another world. Everything here is flat, there is nothing but the water, the sky and the pine trees that give the island its name. After an indeterminate time, hard to quantify since I feel as if I've traveled in dreams rather than in space. I take a pristine white sand path that leads me back to the other bay where the sinfully luxurious Hotel Meridian is. It serves as a reminder that there are still such places in the world to go on holiday. New Caledonia is the perfect image of the typical Pacific island of our dreams, perfectly surrounded with coral reefs and pristine scenery. But it's hard to choose an image that sums up the magic of the Southern Seas, the brilliance of the light, the eternal youth of the endemic scenery, the nights spent sailing by moonlight, the innocent smile of the people, the almost impossible shades of blue in the coral lagoons. In fact, these are islands that make you dream even before you visit them. I stroll around and dream night and day that I am still awake, wide awake. <laughs>